This is a Northeast SARE research report on male sterile BMR sorghum as an alternative summer energy crop. Successful livestock production is growing energy, protein, digestible fiber in sufficient amounts and low enough cost. It is not just corn and alfalfa. Sorghum is planted after winter forage and haylage and so balances your workload. Sorghum has a lower cost per acre with sorghum seed costing $20 per acre versus corn seed costing $120 per acre. It improves soil structure through its fine root system. It wipes out corn rootworm so you can grow corn the next year without having any rootworm loss. No processing is needed in harvest and in fact it is counterproductive to making good silage. It is drought and heat tolerant. It'll grow up to 105 degrees Fahrenheit, whereas corn stops at 85 degrees Fahrenheit. Deer hide in it and come out and eat the neighbor's corn. A non-BMR type is excellent low-cost forage for growing heifers without getting them fat. Corn silage is composed of digestible fiber and cell contents and a large amount of starch in the grain. BMR sorghum can have nearly the same energy, but it is contained in the BMR digestible fiber and the sugar and starch in the plant cells. Our goal was to increase the energy in the plant cells. Most farms are now utilizing a one cut of all sorghum species to get higher yields at lower cost. My research matched that from Wisconsin and that a one cut harvest system will yield twice as much as a two cut system. When a multi cut is harvested in midsummer, there is a tremendous amount of growth lost in the middle of the best part of the growing season. In addition, there is less time invested and nearly half the cost of harvesting. Coupled with doubling the yield, the cost per ton of dry matter to harvest is one quarter what a multi cut is. By direct harvesting and not mowing it on the ground, no dirt is mixed in the forage to spoil the ensiling process. Direct cut sorghum is very easy to chop. Farmers multi-cut with the belief that will give them higher quality forage. As the sorghum species mature, there is very little change in the milk producing ability of the increasing amount of forage. The goal of this study was to increase the nutrients contained in the forage using a delayed harvest system on a male sterile plant. In southern sorghum growing regions, they harvest when the head has a light tan color and the seeds which mature from the top are at soft dough stage halfway down the head. The seeds at the top of the head are very hard and pass the cow system without digesting. In the north, for fertile seed-headed sorghums, we have moved to harvesting when the tip of the head is just starting to reach the soft dough stage. The reason for this is that the sorghum seeds are about the size of number three shot and if allowed to go to the harder dough stage are about as digestible as steel shot. The seed is too small to process without turning the entire forage crop into soup using a lot of power fuel, and slowing the harvest. Secondly, allowing it to go to soft dough stage halfway down the head, even with the lodging resistant brachytic dwarf types in this photo, we had a nearly 40% increase in lodging in one week as we went past early soft dough. With male sterile BMR sorghum, we sidestep all of these issues. We have two options without a seed head. Photoperiod sensitive does not head, but unfortunately it stays wet and does not increase in feed value with time. Male sterile with a non-fertile head increases dry matter until harvest and increases feed quality after heading. There are both BMR sorghum and BMR sorghum sedans that are male sterile. In our trials, they have yielded very well. Male sterile sorghum is like a beef steer. All the growth goes into forage quality after heading. 
From boot stage, we delayed harvest for seven weeks and increased the plant dry matter 53%. Thus, we were hauling more digestible dry matter and less water by waiting with the male sterile sorghum. Using an inoculant, there was no butyric formed in any of the samples. In normal fertile sorghum, photosynthesis in the leaves produces digestible components which are translocated to the fertilized seed head, which has become a nutrient sink. As the seeds become hard, those nutrients are increasingly unavailable to the cow. For male sterile, there is no nutrient sink, and all the nutrients stay in the plant cells of the leaves and the stem, where they can be digested in the rumen. The nutrients continue to accumulate with time after heading. In the rumen, the cells are ruptured by digestion, and the nutrients are steadily released without precipitating subclinical acidosis. With it supporting a higher rumen pH, the animal can produce more components in the milk. No processing is needed. In fact, it is counterproductive to maintain particle size for effective rumen action and extended digestion. This reduces harvesting cost. In our trial, as we waited seven weeks after boot stage, the non-fiber carbohydrates, or NFCs, and the non-structural carbohydrates, the NSCs, both increased significantly. The NFC increased 71%, while the NSC increased a whopping 185%. In that same time frame, the sugar increased an incredible 500%, comprising 18.8% of the dry matter of this forage. This provided substrate for inoculant to rapidly drop the pH. It also was a key to having higher milk protein, all without causing subclinical acidosis. We took the information and Dr. Larry Chase plugged it into the Cornell Net Carbohydrate and Protein System model to determine the metabolizable energy, metabolizable protein, and how much milk would be supported by it. A key to production with BMR forage sorghum is to not treat it like corn silage, where we simply remove corn silage and substituted sorghum silage, as you can see in this chart, the cows dropped because of a ration imbalance caused by an energy shortage. Nutritionists need to understand sorghum silage is not corn silage, and they need to rebalance the ration. Where Dr. Chase balanced the ration, we utilized a balanced corn silage ration of 20 pounds of corn silage and 15 pounds of alfalfa haylage with six pounds of corn grain and three and a half pounds of soy plus. When we rebalance for replacing the corn silage with sorghum, we had to increase the corn grain and decrease the soy plus for the rations at boot and early heading stages. By letting the male sterile increase digestible components over seven weeks after boot stage down to September 21st, we were able to feed several more pounds of sorghum silage because the NDF fiber, the neutral detergent fiber component, decreased. It was diluted by the plant cells increasing digestible components that were not moved to a seed head. Thus, the final sorghum ration produced the same milk as corn silage, but only had about one pound more of corn grain and it had 1.1 pounds less of the more expensive soy plus. On 100 cows, that would save about $5,000 a year in protein supplementation. Where we rebalanced for higher NDF feeding level because the NDF digestibility was higher and added some cornmeal to balance the ration's energy and decrease the protein supplementation, we had the same milk as corn silage. We thank the Northeast SAR for support of this project. We are repeating this study to confirm the findings in this year.